Okay. All right. Don't, don't be weird, Tammy. Do we need Molly? Um, I don't know if she's going to be able to fit in this picture. You can put her right here. Yeah, okay. Hey, call her. Molly! Okay, so first, a little backstory. Our first sailboat that we bought and owned for probably four years was an Endeavor 32. And the reason we have uh, sold that boat and are looking for a bigger boat is basically because of Molly. Molly needs her own space, right? Yes. You need your own cabin, right? Yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. one thing I want to get from you, Molly, before you take off here is like, what are you looking for in the next boat? Like, what do you want? My own space. Yeah, <laughs> but you had your own space in Sandflea. Anything in I particular? Mean, I mean, like, with maybe a door or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that's more like it. She wants her own space, her own enclosed personal yeah. space. And we agree. She's getting bigger, more mature. She needs her own space. I'm looking down through our notes here. I don't know, Molly. You, I mean, you could probably take off if you want to. Is there anything else you want to say to everybody before you take off and, and leave this with mommy and daddy? No? Good to <laughs> I go? I don't know what to say. <laughs> no, okay. All right, then. All right, you can hit the road then. Thanks for your input, Molly. Mm. Ah, ooh. We appreciate it. So another reason we want a bigger boat is we really like the idea of having some guests aboard. Friends, family, fans, I don't know. Just mm -hmm. having that space and that option to be able to have some people come out and visit so we can share, you know, traveling and cruising with them. That's a cool thing, right? Yeah. We joked with Sam Fleet that if we had visitors, we'd have to tie them to the mast and they could sleep standing up. <laughs> that is true. There was not much room to put some guests on Sam Fleet. Another thing uh, I want to talk about is Actually, during our uh, RV trip, we were kind of all over the place. We were talking constantly during the RV trip about what we wanted in the next boat. And one of the ways we really went back and forth a lot is we were trying to decide, did we want to actually go smaller? Did we want to go with a boat that we could pull around on a trailer? And uh, obviously at this point, we've decided against that. We're going to go bigger. But it's just kind of interesting to mention is we were all over the place, back and forth and back and forth. We were talking about getting like a, a Catalina 30 or something like that that we could trailer. There's a lot of benefits to that. We could have the boat here at home in the off season. It might open up some interesting cruising grounds like taking it to the West Coast and doing the Sea of Cortez or the San Juans. All kinds of things like that. But whatever. At this point, we have definitely decided that we're going to be going bigger, right? Yes. You're not flipping again on you. No. No? No trailer sailor? <laughs> Alright, so next we want to talk about our intended use with the next boat. And the intended use is, for us, I mean, it's going to be like an island hopping machine. You know, we're mm -hmm. not necessarily looking for some really overly built, super-serious ocean crosser blue water boat. You know what I mean? So. Uh, island hopping, something that's suitable for cruising the Bahamas, the Caribbean, or the East Coast. Uh, how do you feel about uh, having a boat that we could circumnavigate on, Tamby? I mean, as of right now, I have no desire to <laughs> circumnavigate or cross an ocean. But, I mean, who knows what how we'll feel in five or ten years. But, I mean, if five and ten years and we don't have a boat that is built for circumnavigation. I guess we could always look for a new one again, yeah. but... Yeah. The idea of circumnavigating mm. is one of those things that I'm even torn on. Like, on one hand, it sounds like it sounds like this really awesome adventure. I mean, you only live once. It's such a great place to go see so many interesting places. But, yeah, man, man, the, the idea of being out there at sea for, like, weeks at a time, it's hard to imagine. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's hardcore stuff. Mm -hmm. and I mean, we love cruising, but that's just kind of hard to imagine us doing. But I don't know. It's I, I do, part of me kind of feels that pull in that direction, but I think a larger part of me right now probably is uh, not too interested in circumnavigating. So we'll see. But the whole point is we don't necessarily need a blue water boat. Um, us, our cruising style, you know, we're seasonal sailors you know we like to go out there go on an adventure for say six months at a time or something like that and then come back home you know regroup work on the boat recharge your batteries um visit with family i mean family's like super duper important to us so kind of our style as we see it is just seasonal sailors especially with molly being so young and you know our parents and even grandparents you know you know, getting older, we're trying to squeeze as much family time as we can mm -hmm. right now 
while also you know traveling so yeah doing doing seasonal sailing is kind of our thing kind of we're thinking uh you know when, whenever we get the next bigger boat we're talking about like going south for those six months at a time something like that and then as hurricane season you know approaches actually heading north and going maybe way up you know into kind of new england area or maybe i don't know nova scotia just you know upper east coast kind of thing you know during hurricane season is kind of what we're thinking um holidays back in georgia with our family again and then after the holidays or somewhere around christmas or something like that head back out for another trip south mm -hmm. so that's kind of the cruising style that we we need the boat for anything you want to add to that um you said a little bit about the caribbean you know i'd like to maybe venture south mm -hmm. go to grenada for mm -hmm. a hurricane season sometime too mm -hmm. so yeah we do we want to go at some point we want to go all the way down that island chain like all the way to grenada or trinidad something like that but you know hurricane season is a factor um uh, our, our budget is a factor for sure and and again the other thing that's a factor is um we want to be able to get back home during the holidays to to spend time with family so mm -hmm. it's it's kind of tricky trying to work all this stuff together um you know around a budget and your cruising style and and tamby's needs and molly's needs and everything else but you know we're trying to make that work but yeah all these ideas are what we have in mind when we're shopping for the next boat so general sailboat specifications you want to take this one tammy you want to talk about this one or you want me to keep no, rolling you can keep rolling okay all right so Pretty simple stuff. We are looking for a monohull. Uh, we've talked about catamarans and considered catamarans, and we're not necessarily even opposed to catamarans. But the fact of the matter is that there are so many more uh, monohulls than there are catamarans, and that means there's a much, much better chance that we're going to be able to get a better deal on a monohull. So that, that's why we're going to be zeroed in on a monohull. And catamarans are usually a lot more expensive too oh yeah more more expensive yeah. to buy to maintain there's so many more people mm -hmm. like going after catamarans right now and that drives the price up it's just a lot of demand for them it's kind of the hot mm -hmm. thing right now and the hot thing is always going to be more expensive so mm -hmm. monohull is going to be what we're uh what we're targeting mm -hmm. as far as size goes you know somewhere around 40 feet maybe as big as 45 so i guess you could call it 40 to 45 feet you know, so, yeah. something like that. It's amazing, like, um, you know, it just depends on the design of the boat and the layout and how the storage is set up. I mm -hmm. mean, we've been on really small boats that feel huge inside just because the way they're laid out. And mm -hmm. then we've also been on really big boats that are just, they don't seem like they're designed very practically from a, you know, from a space standpoint and usability, that kind of thing. But I think generally the size range that's going to that's going to make us happy for uh you know having that extra cabin for molly and having uh being able to have people come aboard and visit that kind of thing 40 45 foot monohull mm -hmm. i think is going to get it done yeah and then talking about the draft i like a shoal draft boat i mean we love going to the bahamas we like to really snuggle up really close to uh those uh those shores to be able to minimize the chop and that kind of thing uh, so we're willing to trade off some sailing performance for having that really shallow draft. So something less than five feet. Um, I would be flexible on this, though. I mean, if we found a boat that was like a six-foot draft boat, and it was just, it was a great deal all around and that kind of thing. I mean, I'd be fine with a six-foot draft boat. Mm -hmm. We've known people cruising the Bahamas in boats that had a seven-foot draft. And it's totally possible. You just have to pick your anchorages and such as that. It's really not that big of a deal, but I like a nice shallow draft boat personally. So a draft of mm -hmm. probably between four and five feet. It can have a, doesn't even have to be a, uh, whatever, just a, a traditional solid keel. If it has a swing board or a, a center board, that'd be fine too. So yeah, a draft of less than five feet. Um, we talked about cabins, two fully enclosed cabins. So the V-berth is usually going to be one, and then there's going to be an aft cabin of some sort. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, Molly specifically wants a cabin with a door. Yeah, so two fully enclosed cabins. Uh, talking about the keel again, I don't like bolt-on keels. I like a fully integrated, integrated, in, integrated, encapsulated ballast keel. They know what I mean, right? 
Do you know what I mean? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, no bolt-on keels. Talking about the rudder, I like a rudder hung on a skeg. It could be a partial skeg or ideally a full skeg or even, you know, uh, a, a boat with a full keel where the, the rudder's just bolted on the back of the keel. All those are good options. What I don't like and what I don't prefer are um, spade rudders, the ones that are just, you know, hanging back there on the rudder post and, you know, they're just kind of vulnerable and I just feel better about a, a more protected rudder. Um, also want something with good sailing performance. You know, when we're talking about a lot of these bigger boats, some of them are, you know, they're big, tubby, heavy boats that are made for, you know, crossing oceans and sailing in a straight line for, you know, a week at a time. But I want something that sails well, something that we can sail on and off anchor, something that points well, and, uh, you know, just a good all-round sailing boat. I don't want to, like, you know, there's certain boats that are actually in my mind right now. I don't want to, like, insult other people's boats, that kind of thing, but some boats where you have to turn on the motor just to tack, things like that, you know, I'm not interested in something like that. Or, or even a boat that's, like, super-duper tender that, like, leans way, way over, you know, in, in the wind. You know, a good boat that stands up to the wind and just sails good. Just good sailing performance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How are we doing? Good. I feel like I'm talking a lot. Is there anything else you want to add in here? Uh, no. I mean, you've said everything so far. Yeah. But something, okay, I can talk about that. Uh -huh. uh, we want something that's kind of unique, you know, something that stands out and that not a lot of people have. On that note, I'm going to talk about something that's, uh, I don't know, th this is something that might actually surprise a lot of people. One of the boats that kind of stands out to us, or one of the boat designs that we actually are uh, very interested in, are uh, the cat catches. The, the bigger boats, 40 to 44 feet, something like that, that have two freestanding masts. Most often the masts are carbon fiber. Uh, and some examples of those boats would be like the Freedom Line. The Freedom 40 and uh, 44 are both the ones that we would be interested in. And um, I kind of have the, the idea, and this is going to, probably half of our audience is going to roll their eyes when I say this, but <laughs> something I'm really interested in is actually taking one of those cat catches and converting it to a junk rigged boat. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, here's the thing. Even before we bought Sandflea, when, when we were looking for our first boat, one of the things I had in mind was trying to find some kind of a junk rigged sailboat. It's just, I love the style and uh, the, the philosophy of that rig and the design and how user friendly it is and how different it is. I just love it. And uh, obviously we didn't find that kind of a boat when we were looking for our first boat, so we bought Sandflea, which was an awesome boat. Uh, but if we can possibly find something along those lines, we would love a junk rigged boat. But when you're talking about boats that are kind of up above 40 feet and bigger um, to make a junk rigged boat, you really need something like a cat catch that, for those sails to work. I can probably put a picture up of what a junk rigged cat catch is here for, for people who are like, what the heck is he talking about? <laughs> But uh, yeah, we would be really interested in uh, either finding one of those, which would be extraordinarily rare, or possibly building one, in which case we would need something along the lines of one of those Cat Catch Freedoms that we could then convert to junk rigs. I think it'd be a really interesting project and cool. And, uh, you know, when we talk about, you know, owning a unique boat, that's kind of what we have in mind. And um, along those same lines, talking about a junk rig cat catch, okay, there's sort of a little bit of a story I want to I want to tell you here, right? Mm. So yeah, poor Ben, he was so heartbroken. <laughs> <laughs> so I, again, I've been looking for these these junk rig boats for years and years now, and uh, just a few months ago. Um, again, I was looking for junk rig boats. I happened to be a member on a website called the Junk Rig Association, I think is the name of the website, just to kind of be in that world. And uh, they have a section on that website where there's, you know, they have boats for sale and that kind of thing. And just so happened, what popped up on that website was a, t a boat called a Tanton 43, which I hadn't even heard of before. But uh, this uh, particular guy was was selling this boat for just a. It, 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 I don't want to. I don't want to name the price out of you know respect for the 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 new owner, which again I've been in correspondence with, and you know, 
you know, talking to this guy, trying to talk him out of his boat. Honestly, I wanted him to sell it to us. <laughs> if you're watching this video, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, this boat came up on that Junk Rig Association website and the price was just unbelievable. And the location was unbelievable. It was right here close to us. I mean, it was like, and I saw this and I was like, this is it, Tammy. This is the one. We got to, you know, we got to get this boat now. And, uh, I wasn't able to track down the owner very quickly because his contact information was wrong. But he had written the, the the owner of the boat had written some articles in uh, uh, a magazine called Duckworks and another one in a magazine called Good Old Boat. And through actually tracking down the editors of those magazines, I was able to get in touch with the owner. However, it was too late. <laughs> Yeah, so somebody else had already, you know, uh, purchased that boat, so we missed out on it. And I'm still just like, I'm still just kind of heartbroken about it. And uh, there's still part of me that's like holding out hope that something's going to change uh, ab about the new owner or something like that. But, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to push fate, you know, kind of thing. I'm trying to be patient. And if something changes, great. If something doesn't change, hey, we're going to go with, uh, you know, we're still trying to find another boat. Here are some specific boats. These are just examples of ones that we would strongly consider, you know, buying. Uh, some of these are, are cat catches with freestanding masts. Others have, you know, traditional stayed rigs. So we're not completely just being hard-headed about this uh, freestanding mast thing. Although I'd be, we'd be most excited if we could find something that would work along these lines. However, we understand that you know, coming up with something like that is, is going to be more difficult. So here are some examples. A, and these are in no particular order. A Bristol 411, that's a center cockpit. A Pearson 422 or 424, that's a, that's a center cockpit and an aft cockpit version on that one, both of which have two enclosed cabins. Then there's the Freedom 40 and the Freedom 44. There's the Tanton 43 that I mentioned, that junk rig boat that uh, that I'm depressed about. <laughs> <laughs> the Gulf Star 44 might be one. I know Gulf Star quality is kind of, you know, kind of hit and miss, uh, I, I guess sometimes depending on different models. But I, I, from what I hear, the 44 is one of the better ones from Gulf Star. Uh, the Corbin 39 is another one. And then this next one here is one that I would probably put at the very top of our list, actually. I know I said this wasn't in priority order, but the Katie Krogan 38 is an amazing boat. If we had to choose one that we'd would just be the very top pick for us right now, I think we would call it the Katie Krogan 38. And the, the last one on this list here is a Peterson 44, and that's a that's a very nice boat too. But and there's probably plenty of examples that I could have put in this list as well. But those are just kind of some ideas to give you an idea of kind of the pedigree and quality and um, features and stuff like that that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. All right, so the next little section of our list here is talking about helping us look for a boat. Yeah, we, I mean, if you guys come across anything that seems to fit, you know, what we're looking for, please let us know. But here's uh, some additional bullet points of kind of, you know, if you come across something, kind of run it through this filter, you know, before you send it to us. Uh, at the very top of the list, and I would say this probably is an order of priority, is that the boat is unlisted. If it's advertised, if you see it on Facebook or sailboat listings or Boat Trader or Yacht World or anything like that, we know about it. <laughs> I mean, we're on top of it. I mean, if it's advertised, I mean, chances are we've already seen it. Mm -hmm. So it's important that it is actually a unlisted boat. And I guess people may be wondering, well, if it's unlisted, how would anybody know that it's for sale? Well, it's like it's one of those things where, I don't know, a relative is selling a boat or a friend or a uh, your your neighbor at the dock or mm -hmm. the marina has taken over a boat that somebody hasn't been making slip payments on or I don't know they're all kind of situations like where you just kind of hear through the grapevine that uh you know a boat may be for sale so that's what we're talking about when mm -hmm. we say unlisted um we also we want it to be for sale by the owner and not to have a broker involved. I mean, far and away, I would rather be dealing directly with the owner of the boat. Uh, let's see, also on this list is we do need a smoking deal. And uh, I just want to kind of quantify that. 
But for me, a smoking deal does not mean a boat that we can have for a dollar or a free boat or a cheap boat. Mm -hmm. It has to also, it has to be a combination of price and value. You know what I mean? Like a, a free or cheap boat that has no value is, is actually probably one of the most expensive things you could possibly buy because mm -hmm. you're going to be spending a tremendous amount of time and money on, you know, fixing it up and repairing it and putting it back together and all that stuff. So, you know, we're looking for a boat that kind of has that cross section of price, you know, low price, high value is what we're looking for there. So a smoking deal is, is uh, really what we need. Uh, the boat does not have to be turnkey. It doesn't have to be, you know, we can hop on it and, and head out cruising right away. I accept the fact that in order to get that boat that is a low price but high value, there's a reason behind that. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, there's all kinds of different reasons, but, um, I, I don't mind at all having to do some amount of work to a boat to get it ready to go. But I do have to draw the line somewhere. I don't want to be like on that Endeavor 40 in the previous video. I don't want to have to be spending a year or more. Tearing uh, up decks. And... Yeah, replacing soggy decks um, or doing major structural work. You know, that that kind of thing. Um, however, you know, I'm fine with loads of cosmetic stuff. Um, you know, adding equipment is, is just fine. If it's uh, actually another note down here is... If it's a really bare bones boat, like in other words, if it's, maybe it's one of these great boats, but it just does not have any gear. <clears throat> Excuse me. It does not have any gear. Like uh, maybe it doesn't have uh, autopilot and solar and a Bimini and Dodger and all this stuff that makes cruising so much more enjoyable. Uh, I can add that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, even up to the point of possibly repowering with a new engine. If it's a great boat, but the engine's shot, that, that's a really valid reason to be able to get a good discount on that boat and be able to have, uh, you know, the, the finances available to possibly repower. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I get it. I, I'm not opposed to doing work. It just needs to make sense all the way around. You know what I mean? So, as far as our motivation goes right now, we are very ready to get back out there. T Tammy, how ready are you to get back out there? Extremely ready. I feel like missing this last cruising season and seeing friends out there and pictures and it's just I miss it a lot and we're very ready to be back cruising and we would like to not miss another cruising season. Yeah we, we really want to get out there. So this was a good sentence. So between trying to find a bigger more expensive boat and one that's in good enough condition and also one that we can get a real deal on we're kind of looking for a needle in a haystack. <laughs> that's that pretty much sums it up right mm -hmm. yeah so yeah i mean if you know of any good boats out there that uh kind of seems like a fit against this criteria we've provided send it to us you know you can email it to us at sailboatstory at gmail.com you can send us a facebook message um don't send us a message through youtube those tend to get just buried kind of in the comments mm -hmm. so either email or a facebook message is probably best but that's pretty much it i mean that that's that's what we're looking for and our goal is to get back out there this cruising season so ideally you know departing for uh, our next trip say i don't know december or january or something like that mm -hmm. but again we need to buy the boat well yeah. ahead of that time. Yeah, we're, we're going to be way behind the curve. Mm -hmm. All right, Tammy, close this one off for us. I'm leaving it completely up to you. Help us find our boat, please. <laughs> we need to get this man back in the Bahamas. Yeah, that please. is right. That is, you got that exactly right. All right. Well, thanks for watching this video. Yep. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>